Beloved, are you seeking profound teachings from the Bible that will deepen your understanding of Christ and nurture your spiritual growth? Look no further. The Grace Life Coming Podcast is here to guide you on a transformative journey. Join us as we explore a wide range of subjects, including the finished work of Christ, the knowledge of the Holy Spirit, the words and life of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, and so much more. Our podcast offers simple yet profound teachings that will empower you to grow and mature in the faith. The Grace Life Kobe podcast will help you engage, learn, and connect. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to grow in your faith and connect with others who share your passion for Christ. Grace Life Kobe podcast, raising men to completeness in Christ. Subscribe and connect with us today and embark on a life-changing adventure. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord. Beloved, we are glad to have you listening again to simple yet profound teachings from God's Word. Sit back and be blessed throughout this session. God bless you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise we give God. God praise and glory. We celebrate the mighty God for bringing us again to um, this fresh episode of um, the Family the Home series. Um, thus far, uh, God has helped us. And uh, we move on to what God has in store for us today. Amen. Amen. Uh, to start off with, Pastor, please help us with the opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we bless and appreciate you. We give you praise and glory. We give you honor and thanksgiving. Thank you for another time of fellowship in your presence. Sweet Holy Spirit, as the teacher of the world, we ask that you teach us. Grant us understanding that we may live to your glory and praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, so on this series, uh, previously we understood uh, the place of authority in the home and how we saw how you know authority can be designated depending on circumstances or, or choice of uh, you know the, the head of the family. Amen. Uh, in this session, we are still going to be talking in light of it. That is why our title for t- this episode is... Uh, Home management. Amen. Amen. This session addresses the head of the family as ordained by God to manage the small family units named by God. And who is this designated or ordained personality, you know, um, ordained by God to manage the home? Is the man. Is the man. According to God's ordained design, man is the manager of the family or the home. The book of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15 helps us understand this. Uh, when it says, um, and the Lord God took the man, he took the man, and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Amen. Amen. And um, the garden of Eden was the home God created for mankind. And the first personality that God placed in the Garden of Eden or in the family is is the man. Okay? He, he didn't place the woman. No. He didn't place a boy or a girl. No. God placed the man. Amen. And his purpose for placing the man there was to dress and to keep the garden. So in other words, he's to serve in that home and manage it. We looked into service also in our previous uh, episode where we saw the importance of um, service engendered by love and not just uh, service void of it. Amen. So, as a manager serving the garden, God planted, the man is to conduct or supervise all of God's business on earth. First in the garden. It was it was all about the garden at first, before the fall. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So management can mean any of these words. It can mean administration. You can't have a business that does not have administration. It will not stand. Yeah. It talks about care. You have to care for something when you are managing it. Yeah. It talks about taking charge. It talks about conducting, controlling giving direction, you know, um, governing, guidance, handling, operation, oversight, regulation, stewardship, 
you know, supervision and and all, all, all other words. Amen. Amen. So to 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 really look into this topic on home management, I want us to read the scripture in the book of Luke, chapter twelve. We're going to be looking at Luke 12, verse 42 to 43. And it says, The Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? In verse 43, say, Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Praise the Lord. So you see the word servant, you see the word uh, stewardship, uh, you know, according to God's design, they all talk about management. They all talk about being a manager. Because in our times, when you hear the word servant, it's quick to think of a slave. Yeah. Okay. We might, we are slaves for Christ, yes. But our, our being slaves of, for, for Christ is love engendered. Sure. So we're still back to, you know, ordering our service based on love. Yeah. In the kingdom of God and even in our homes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, who then is that faithful and wise steward? Whom the Lord shall make ruler. So first and foremost, for a man to be the man, you know, that uh, qualifies to be a manager according to God's standard, he has to be faithful. He has to be what? wise being faithful and wise are the you know criteria uh, to be a ruler over the household that god is giving to you or god is handing over to you and as because only when you are faithful and when you are wise can you do the needful which is give those in your your household their portion of meat in due season praise the lord hallelujah now, I, I want us for better understanding, we are going to be picking these words uh, gradually uh, as we move on. So I'm going to start with the word faithful. I want us to look at faithful, we'll look at wise, we are going to look at steward. We are going to look at what it means to be Lord, what it means to, you know, make a ruler out of one. We're going to be looking at what household really refers to. We're going to be looking at what, uh, you know, portion of meat and uh, due season speaks about amen so the word faithful is the term pistos and the greek term pistos and by bible definition refers to persons who show themselves faithful in transaction of business this now makes us understand really that god's business first and foremost is family sure even in the garden it was first family all all god was making uh, you know the the man uh you know get set or get prepared for was what it takes to be a manager of a family praise the lord hallelujah he says person who shows themselves faithful in transaction of business the execution of commands or the discharge of official duties also speaks of persons who kept his plighted faith worthy of trust and can be relied on so as the man that god has you know um appointed head of a family can god count you worthy of trust can god rely on you that you will raise this family according to his design according to his you know as he has proposed it also speaks of a person that is easily persuaded believing confiding and trusting this, these are all definitions of what it means to be a faithful um, steward. And in the New Testament, faithful is, refers to one who trusts in God's promises. As the, as the man of the home, as the man of the family, you should be, one, should be the one to you know, embody and exemplify what it means to, to you know, trust in God's promises. Only then can you actually portion meat to those in your household in due season. Hallelujah. Praise God. One who has become convinced that Jesus is the Messiah and author of our salvation. And we've, as we've um, portrayed again and again or emphasized again and again, uh, this series is focused on the, the uh, family under Christ or in Christ. Amen. Now the word wise 
when we look at it from the Greek word, it is the word phronimos. Phronimos. And by Bible definition, it means to be intelligent. It means to be wise. It also means to be prudent. And being prudent means you are mindful of one's interests. Again, I think we've spoken about being selfless in the family. Yeah. You're mindful of one's interest. That is, you should be thoughtful. You should be discreet. And by implication, it means to have a cautious character and also means possessing practical skill or acumen and intelligence or mental requirements. So it takes, you know, being uh, intelligent to know what to be, you know, to, to really be a steward according to God's, standard. you know, standard. Yeah. You, you have to, you have to be thoughtful. You have to be discreet. You have to, you know, go for more knowledge. You must be someone that yearns for more. I want to know more. We're not saying you should be perfect, but you should, you know. Progressive. In yes. So, uh, and that's what prudence requires from um, the man. And then the word, steward is the word oikonomos. Oikonomos. And by Bible definition, it means the manager of a household or of household affairs, especially of a steward. It could be a manager, it could be a superintendent. And um, it's also to whom the head of the house or proprietor has is in, entrusted the management of his affairs. So God has entrusted every family through the man. You know, every, every family named under him. He's entrusting the rulership, the guidance, the direction of the family, the management of the family through the man. Amen. Amen. He also speaks of the duty of dealing out the proper portion to every servant or, and even to the children that are not yet of age. Okay. He speaks of a manager of, of an estate, an overseer. Um, metaphorically, he speaks of apostles and other Christian teachers, bishops, and overseers. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, so, and we know that the, for the family, the head of the family is meant to be the overseer of the family. Sure. Uh, your, 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 your immediate household should be your, I use the word church members, or those you better into Christ. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. And then we move on to the word Lord. Yeah, we know, we know the word Lord. But just for, you know, for definition, it's the word kurios, the Greek word kurios, kurios, kurios. <laughs> and by Bible definition, it refers to he to whom a person or a thing belongs, about which he has power of deciding. So you are the man, yes, but you belong to God, who is, I will use the word general overseer of every family. He used the word master lord. It's more of a title of honor, expressive of respect and reference. And uh, with each servant, they, they normally use it to greet their master. But most importantly, this title is given to God the Messiah. Amen. Amen. So in this scripture, we are referring to God as the Lord who is appointing the man as ruler. You know? Okay. Then we are moving to the word ruler itself. And it's the Greek word ketistemi. And ketistemi means to set in place, to set or put uh, one over a thing that is to be in charge of, to be put in charge of something. It also means to appoint one to administer an office. It means to set down as, it means to constitute, to declare, to show to be, uh, to render. To conduct or bring to a certain place to show or exhibit oneself by by coming forward as the one appointed. Uh, before we move further, it's just from this definition, he helps us understand um, what it means to be a manager. Okay, being a manager doesn't mean you are the CEO. Do you understand? Yeah. Being a manager doesn't mean you are the founder. No. It doesn't mean you are the or you know you don't have the final say. You are not yeah. the last stop. Yeah. You are just appointed. You are just set in place and, you know, put forward as the appointed one for others to, you know, follow your directive, to follow your order. So in another word, I would like to call 
a manager, a caretaker. Yeah, basically. So the man is more of the caretaker of this small family unit that God has appointed to him, yeah. that God has given to him. Yeah. And there is what God expects the man to do with this um, appointment. Yeah. The word household is the word therapia. When I saw this word, I was like, wow, household, therapia. You know, and it takes the root word from uh, the word therapy. Okay. And, and it, it brings to mind <laughs> some, some basic things that we don't even understand. Now, when you look at the definition of therapy, it's, it refers to the service rendered by one to another. Service rendered by one to another. Now, God has been helping us from the last series to understand this aspect of service. Yeah. We have not seen family as a place of service yeah. so far. Many don't see their families as a place of service. But when you look at God's design, it should be a place of service. We are meant to be rendering service to one another and in love. Hallelujah. Praise God. So specifically, when you look at this word therapy, it just refers to, you know, medical. That is to cure. To cure. And figuratively and collectively, he speaks of domestic, so healing and household. Yeah. So you see, God has given us this provision of the family for our healing. Healing is all encompassing. It's not just when you are sick. Sure. Now when we go back to the Garden of Eden, remember that God puts, you know, plants there. Yeah, he says for what? For herbs. For herbs. So God put provision of healing in the Garden of Eden. The same way he has put in our families. But we will need light to know the healing provision God has, you know, put in our homes. Otherwise, the family will remain sick and we'll be looking for cure. When yeah. cure is meant to be, it's already been provided. Yeah, it's meant to be a place of cure. All right, so I leave it to you now to push for us. Yeah, basically when you said therapy, mm. I was like, I got, I got thinking and thinking, I'm like, ah, what does this remind you of? And then I remember therapy, mm. which happens to be one of the Greek words for healing, mm -hmm. um, healed. And um, that's a root word for therapy, Yes, which is a therapeutic process. Mm. I want to know therapeutic processes take time. Praise mm. God forevermore. Hallelujah. Yeah, so basically, um, the healing approach that God has put in the family needs time. Mm. That's, the, that, 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 that's the reason why, you know, um, the, the, the man has to spend time with the family mm. to be able to heal the family effectively. Mm. Um, he, he has to spend time with the wife, spend time with the children. And one of the things the devil has done over the years is to make sure that the man does not spend time. Mm. Because therapy is therapy. That's mm. the root root of therapy. And therapeutic healings are not treatments. They are not suddenly. Mm. They take time. Some of them could even take years. Amen. Amen. And um, the reason why we see a lot of families are so sick, Christian families, because the devil has made sure that time, he has removed the, um, the man from the family to give it the family time. Mm. So the man does not have time for the family. He's out there chasing the money. Are we together? Yeah. Chasing all he needs to take care of the family. But, you know, at the end of the day, you discover that after you chase everything, the family ends up becoming more sick. Mm. Ah, yeah. Somebody will say, but, ah, we need the money. Yes, I know we need the money. But you see, um, that's why the onus is heavy. Mm. Because while you are chasing the money, you must also give time to the same family so that you can ensure that there's healing. Yes. You know, I uh, listened to a man of God once and he said, he's so busy, he doesn't really have time. Mm. See, but one day he just stood with his son and he told the son, all I see is that I see me in you. Mm. And he said, that word, that word, Give the boy so much strength. Are we together? Mm. Now, you never can tell how much, you know, as a man, your words will give healing to your wife or to your children. Yeah. You never can tell how much it will give healing. You know, they are meant, most more often than not, when you see boys with low self esteem, it's actually because either they are, their fathers were tarnish, were, were tearing them down with their words, mm. or their fathers had no time. To heal them with your words mm. because as they go out they get sick yeah they go to school they get sick mm. psychologically sick some of them are bullied some of them 
even if they're not bullied, they just feel they're not up to it. And they need the father to make them believe more in themselves. Mm. Also, the ladies are there too. They go out there. They need the man, the, the, a man figure to make them know how important they are. I know a while ago, my daughter told me, said, Daddy, you don't, you don't um, hail me like you used to hail me before. You only hail my brother. I'm like, hey, you know, it really caught me because I, I, I was like, all right, sorry. And I said, they're hating her. Because you never can tell how much these words of appreciation mm. we heal them from what they meet outside. Yeah. The sickness out there is crazy. You never can tell what the words of comfort, of strengthening can do to your wife, how they can heal. So basically, the role of the, of the man is a healer in the home. Mm. And you may say, but how will he heal people when he's actually sick? Yes, because when he goes out, the man is facing a lot of challenges. He really needs to be treated. Amen. Amen. But that's why, remember, he's the manager and he's not the owner. He must go to the owner for treatment. Yes. And when the owner treats him, he then comes to treat his wife and his children. Mm. And don't forget, it's not suddenly. It's over time. You have to keep, you have to keep treating. You have yeah. to keep treating. You have to keep healing them. I remember once I sat with my dad because he would not talk to anybody. He's always on his own. And I asked him, what do you have to say about that? I just asked him that question because I really needed to hear from him. And he told me, Chin, the one thing I have to say about you is that you are focused. I can't forget that word in my life. Mm. It might just have been one word. Are you getting me? Yeah. It might just have been one word because it's not a person giving to words. Mm. It might just have been one word, but I, that word, that word sank into me. So even when I want to lose focus in life, I remember that my dad told me, I am what? I am focused. Mm. So that word, I can never forget it in my lifetime. I don't think any of my siblings ever sat him down to ask them what they had to say about them. Mm. But I had to sit in there because I discovered that he won't talk to us. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I had to bring him out. And I, I only told me that what he said, you are focused. I'm like, wow, so this is what this man has been seeing about him. Mm. So, so this is what he knows about me. You know, I remember I was even talking to him about something and I said, but this thing I don't need to say, Chimbi, so that one I can beat my hand on my chest. Like, so he means that he knows everything about us, but he's just keeping quiet. You know, it's very important for the, the man, for the father, to heal his family mm. and do it over time. Don't just do a quick fix and go. Mm. When you see that there's a little sickness again, sit down with words, heal. Sit down with comfort, heal. Sit down with encouragement, heal. It's your job you have to do. Because your children, your wife, are getting sickness from different environments, mm. <laughs> from different sectors of the economy. In fact, I heard the story of a particular man of God who told him, there was a woman who used to come and visit his wife. And he noticed that when that man started visiting his wife, his wife started behaving in a particular way. Mm. He said, I don't want to see that woman in this house. Mm. Yeah. It's a man's responsibility to, to tell his wife, no, I don't want that association. So these are different ways of bringing him. Yeah. Mm. I don't want that association any longer. You see, um, 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 Today I'm aware of talking now. We talked, we talked, talked now. Like okay, this thing, this is where you go about it. Now, because when she talks, I shouldn't, I don't take things for granted. Why? Because I, my job is to bring it. So, uh, all right, this way should go. This way we should go about it now. Do it this way. Why? Because if I don't take my responsibility for healing, are we together? Mm. At the end of the day, the sickness will come back on you. Mm. Like um, they say, uh, some of the times, shepherd, they suffer the sickness of sheep. Mm. And don't also forget that some, um, some doctors, they end up contracting the sickness of their patients. Mm. So if you are not healing your wife and your children, in no time, you will contract their sickness. Of course. So the earlier you start healing and continue healing. And before you know it, the whole family is, the whole suffering, is suffering when the provision of healing has already been made by God. Made, yeah. So mm. take the word of God. You are the manager. You are to administer the the, the, treat, the treatment, take the word of God. That's every man, every man must be, must be a student of the word. Mm. At least you should be able to teach your family. The your word place of, of being a king and priest should not be undermined. No, no. It should not be played down. No. Or, yeah. you, you, like you were saying sometimes, you were talking about uh, a description of a man I talked about, an apostle. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to be the apostle of your house. Mm. You have to be the teacher of your you house. You have to be the teacher. You have to be the overseer. pastor of your, the overseer mm. of your house. Mm. You have to be all of this to your house. Mm. It doesn't mean that you must be an um, over the over the uh, board, you know, Bible eschatologist. Mm. But you should be able to practically bring scriptures to the house. Yeah. Now, so when you see a particular sickness that is going on in your house, 
go look for the scriptures. There are stories in the Bible. Mm. Go and look for them. Oh yeah, bring it to the house. And then, deal with the matter with scriptures. It's as simple as that. Mm. Where your children are having issues, bring them, sit them down. Bring scriptures. You don't need to be an over-the-board eschatologist or uh, exegesis master. Mm. Bring scriptures. Practicalize the scripture. Make them practicable before them. And then you have healed the matter. Mm. It's as simple as that. Mm. And if every man can do that, and which is very possible. Very possible. Very possible. If every man does that, discover that our Christian homes will be the Eden it's meant to be. Mm. Yeah, I think that that's that basically what I have to say for now. Praise God. So we, we, we just have to um, come to terms with the fact that uh, um, the home is more than a, a place of association. It's more than a place where you have uh, blood ties. It's a place of service. And now we're understanding that it's a place of healing. A place of healing. All kinds. Of, Jesus, speaking about Jesus, he went around teaching preaching and healing all kinds of yeah. so he healing is there even in the body of christ yeah but we still have some that are sick yeah okay and that's because we know some are not appropriating the healing you know you you, you by strike you were healed yeah. as they should do you understand based on their knowledge level and all that and many other things some don't believe in miracles and the rest of it our home is supposed to be it's more like a a, a pilot of the body of Christ, yeah. you know, so you 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 have to uh, bring the scriptures home. Don't leave it to church. You have to bring the scriptures home because this provision has been made. See your home as the Garden of Eden. All that God created in the Garden of Eden, He has also put in your home. And as the man was placed in the Garden of Eden in the beginning, you have also been placed in this Garden of Eden. You are as the head of your family. So you have to look, at, look around the things you need to dress, the things you need to keep yeah. in your home and provide the, the healing um, as, 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 you, as you proceed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. So having said that, the English dictionary also defines household as, you know, those who dwell under the same roof and, comp and it composes of a family. Or a social unit composed of those living together in the same dwelling. So, if you limit yourself to English dictionary, you will not have the understanding of what God has provided for in the household. <laughs> Amen. So, healing will be will be lacking. Uh, people will be suffering under your care, and you would not know that you are the reason why people are suffering because you lack the understanding of the family package you have been given. The household package you have been given as a man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the scriptures in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 2 says, um, I'm going to be using four translations. It says, moreover, King James says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. His English says, a servant must remember all the things that his master wants him to do every day. Every day. So the task of the man, Keeping and dressing the garden that God has given to him needs a review every day. Don't get, you know, it's easy for us to get stereotype with the same. And some, some have gotten used to read that before you know they already say, Do you know I'm the I'm the head? Do you know I'm the I'm the father? Do you know I'm your husband? You know, you get to say that because you've got this whole stereotype with the title, you are not even conversant with you know your responsibilities. Because if you you are Abreast with your responsibility, you won't, put, you won't find yourself in a situation where you have to remind the members of your family that you are so, so, and so. Yeah. Okay? He continues to say, uh, he, continues to say um, he must do all those things because his master wants him to do them. There is what God wants us to do, uh, um, what God wants the man to do in the family. You must do these things based on um, God's pattern. Amen. BB says, and it is right for such servants to be safe persons. To be safe persons. And ISB says, now it is required of servant managers. ISB put the two together. Servant managers. They are not a king manager. <laughs> most, most head of families behave. 
<laughs> they see themselves as Lion King yeah. managers. Yeah. They roar and everybody runs away. Mm -hmm. You know, their faces are so strong and nobody can say anything. They are not approachable. Uh, servant managers that each one should prove to be what? Trust, trustworthy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when as the scripture tells us again that, um, you know, you need all this so that you can give the portion of meat to your household in due season. It is very, very important. Due season speaks of on, uh, the right time, right? Yeah. It speaks of when it's needed. Don't, don't make your household go hungry. You know, the food provision that God has put in your garden, the meat provision God has put in your garden, bring it home. Make it available in the home. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And verse 43 says, Blessed is, is that servant whom the Lord, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. This tells us that there will be a day of reckoning sure. for the head of the family. As the head of a family, listening to this episode, are you ready for your reckoning? Can you stand before the master to say, as you said, I did. Or as you instructed, I delivered. Or as you provided, I measured out. These are the things this um, series want us to, you know, call ourselves to order to and um, make the necessary adjustments and ask the Lord for grace and mercy to do, you know, what will make uh, the master pleased with you when he comments in Jesus name. I don't know if you have anything to add to it. Yeah, basically all, all has been said, all has been said, it's just a clarion call to managers mm. to do the needful. Um, I know the times we live in is challenging. There's so much on the shoulders of the, the, man. the man, you know, there's a desire to want to run, want to make ends meet, want to meet needs. Mm -hmm. You know, the natural man does not want to sit down mm -hmm. when he's tired. But I think it's a call for us to sit. Amen to Jesus. Amen. It's a call for us to sit and do what the Lord will have us to. Um, take the responsibility. Um, the grace of God is sufficient for you. Amen. You are under the cover of Jesus. Yes. Yeah, he's the head. Amen. Amen. And he is your cover. So you can be rest assured that when you take this responsibility, Jesus is backing you up. Yes. Yeah, you're not doing it on your own. You are not carrying this responsibility on your own. It's not your show. There are times I just tell the Lord, I say, Lord, you love my wife more than I love her. Yes. You love my, my children. children more than I love them. Mm. You know, so I just have to tell the Lord that. I have to tell myself that. Not like I'm telling the Lord because the Lord knows. Mm. I just have to tell myself that. And with that, I think the the, the, the pressure, it, you know, it gives way and I can trust God more. And you see, that's another way of manifesting or demonstrating um, your level of wisdom. Okay? Because wisdom, in this sense, teaches you that you are not sufficient of yourself. Sure. You, are, you have to depend on your master. Sure. Ah. Sure. Sure. So, we, we, the, especially the managers, men, they have to grace up. You have to, you have to not only understudy and see the sicknesses in your children, but you have to make sure you treat them. Mm. Like I said, when my dad, I asked him and he told me that about, I, 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 would, say, I would say I knew that, but I didn't know it like that, you know, and he just made, he just used one word to define it's me. Just, to me. It's just an affirmation. Yeah, you know, he used one word to just define me to me. You know, um, the, 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 in these times we live in, as a fathers, we don't wait for our children or our wives to ask us. For treatment, we have to jump in and treat. Mm. We have to be proactive about it. Mm. See it, act fast, be sensitive. It's not easy yet, but the grace of God is sufficient. And you know the truth about it: the more you do this work, discover that the more you find fulfillment in doing it. And before you know it, you see that you are enjoying it and you are fulfilled. Maybe some of the time, maybe like you are using your seemingly work time mm. to do it. Well, you see, God has a way of rewarding us. Yes. Because the main work is the home. Yes. While we're working on the work, it's not for the home. Mm -hmm. When we do God's work, he knows how to reward us. Yes. Amen. Amen. So just uh, another reminder, we are not, the man is not a hero. No. 
He's a caretaker. He's a manager. You are not a hero. <laughs> You're a manager. So don't don't try to go overboard. Yeah. Don't try to do things that are not in your strength. Depend on the Lord. Yeah. Depend on the Lord. And then uh, God is going to help you through. And then also remember that, uh, like we said, you can delegate. Yeah. Yes. Um, just like you go to the hospital. Uh, there are some steps that nurses take. And there are some steps that doctors have to attend to. There are some that uh, this the ph pharmacist, uh, you know, comes in. Everyone has got his rule. Yeah. So don't don't be the everything. Mm -hmm. You can designate. Yeah. And that way, healing can flow easily in the home. Yeah. The cure can go around, <laughs> and everyone is, you know, gets his food and his meat in due season. Uh, we pray that that shall be our experience in Jesus' name. Amen. Please close us in this episode. Abba Father, we thank you for what you have taught us. Yes, Lord. Lord, you've reminded us as men our road, our work as managers. Mm -hmm. Lord, help us manage. Amen. Help us trust you. Amen. To do this work. Yes, Lord. Because this is our, our primary responsibility. Mm -hmm. Help us to do it. Yes, Lord. And so that when we come, we shall be faithful to you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Today, beloved, I would like to invite you to receive the Lord Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior by making this prayer of salvation along with me. Say, believing in your heart, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you came to this earth. You died for the sins of the world cleansed the sin of those who believe in you and resurrected from the dead. This you did because you love me. Today, I receive your love, your death, your forgiveness, and your resurrection. I renounce my sins today. I choose to make you the Lord of my life. Jesus, I choose to serve and follow you all the days of my life in jesus mighty name amen thank you jesus oh wow glory be to god for making this decision and i pray that the lord almighty will keep you safe and secured even to the end in jesus precious name amen congratulations For your love gift of any amount to Grace Life Kami Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available. To give in dollars, send to account number 033-154-551-2013 with SWIFT code MBGHGHAC to give in CDs. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number 033-254-551-2017 or to give in naira send to ecobank nigeria account number 554-102-0592 also for further enquiries you can call us on plus 233054594-7132 or send us an email via Chimdi Ohahuna Ministry at gmail.com. Remain ever blessed. Beloved, thanks for listening to the full teaching. We believe you have been blessed. Please send us your praise reports. Send us your comments. We'd we'll love to hear from you. Kindly tell others about Grace Life Komi podcasts. Share what God is doing in your life through these teachings. God bless you richly. Amen. <music>